Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is another Friday with a little bit of sun peeking out here in Manhattan, and I'm Matt Hall for your KSO Today on February 7th, 2020. KSO Today is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Here in Manhattan alone, you can find locations for both PSB and Legacy Insurance, plus six PSB ATMs located throughout the Little Apple. All right, with that out of the way, let's move on to some news and notes real quick. I want to first reference the report from you know Ryan Black and the Manhattan Mercury on Sean Snyder heading to USC. Uh, I think it's I think it's great news you know for Sean Snyder. I know he had opportunities. I think at, you know programs like Nebraska and even Texas and USC. He was certainly sought after. Uh, I thought he did up in Nebraska, but I, you know, that just was a personal kind of opinion. And from what I've been hearing, either way, it's good to see him get an opportunity. He'd spent a lot of time at K-State, given a lot of effort to K-State, um, had a lot of impact on the program at K-State for a long time. So I uh, personally wish him the best going forward at USC. And that will be interesting to follow for sure going forward. Uh, let you all know we will be heading to Ames tomorrow morning to cover the K-State-Iowa State game from Hilton Coliseum. Then we'll stay overnight on Sunday, make our way back through Des Moines, Iowa to meet with class of 2021 football commit Jaden Williams. Uh, I think it's West Des Moines High School. We'll see him out Sunday morning. So Derek Young set it up for us again. Really appreciate him doing that. He's put a lot of work into that stuff for us um, getting these set up. So today I think we shared a new thing on the site just called Three Thoughts for Me. Something I'll try to do every Friday going forward. Uh, a thought on the basketball program and their big game at Iowa State tomorrow, which of course We'll preview really heavily on the site. Then a couple of thoughts just on the football freshman class that we met with earlier this week. A lot of stuff I've already shared on the message board, etc. But kind of just tied it up into a, maybe a neater package. Um, if you haven't read that, that's something you could certainly look at if you wanted to. Something I like to do on Fridays. Uh, Flando is back and he's good. He's back here with us. But we're going to wait till next week to start Flando Friday. So when I don't have him doing that for me, I like to do something slightly different. I think last week I came up with a list of five uh, redshirt freshmen to watch for next next year for football. I think we would move on to the sophomore class next, but I wanted to be different. There's a lot of sophomores on the roster that have, you know, a lot of hype because they started games. They've made big impacts. People know who they are. So you may not hear, well, you're not going to hear because it's my list and I can see it in front of me. You know, the Malik Knowles, Joshua Youngbloods, Wayne Jones, very, very good players. If I was ranking the best sophomores on the roster, those guys, of course, would be on it. Um, and are had have fantastic futures at K-State and were very good last year. What I'm talking about is just five sophomores that maybe when you're thinking of K-State sophomore class, either you don't think of right away in that class or perhaps players who didn't play a bunch last year, players maybe they're at positions of need, uh, just not the common names for sophomores. So number five I have written down would be Samuel Wheeler. Right off the bat, I don't know how available Samuel Wheeler is going to be. I don't expect to see him for the spring for sure after a really bad ACL tear, tear last year. Uh, I just think when healthy and if he gets healthy by the time, you know, next season when that were to start, um, and if not, even in the future, I think he provides an athletic pass catching option at tight end that I don't know that they really have on the roster outside of him. We'll see, you know, if Will Swanson or Cody Suffelbein or that kind of guy. We'll see if Nick Leonard's after he drops some weight becomes that kind of guy too. There are options to be that player, but I haven't really seen it so far outside of Sammy Wheeler. So if he could get healthy, that'd be big. And he's a sophomore. I think people aren't talking about a ton when they're looking at K-State's roster big picture. Number four is an incoming recruit, and that's Derek Newton. He's a sophomore, of course, who's been at K-State twice now, originally signed uh, under Bill Snyder. And that staff left the program, with the Butler Community College, was there for a year, performed really, really well. Uh, had a lot of kind things said about him from the staff at Butler and also players who'd been with him here at K-State. Chris Kleiman and the staff was happy to take him back. There's absolutely playing time available at defensive tackle for K-State. Of course, with the graduations of Trey Deshaun and Jordan Mitty, there are a lot of snaps available there. There is some experience back at that position. Derek Newton's not going to get his slide in and take over that spot. But again, he is just a sophomore because he only played one year at Juco. I think he's three to play three for K-State. Um, he's this person who's going to have a chance to start as soon as this year. And he's a big part of that sophomore class, I think, going forward. Number three, I'm cheating some because this guy has started games and has made an impact. But I feel like I fail to mention him whenever I'm talking about the sophomore class. So I'm going to bring him up here. And that's Philip Brooks. I think we talk so much about Malik Knowles and Joshua Youngblood and those young receivers and even Keenan Garber, you know, a true freshman last year. But I get guilty of just not mentioning Philip Brooks, who's just a sophomore. He is a scholarship player. He made plays last year both in the return game and as a receiver. I think he's somebody who has a very bright future for K-State. And I know we talk a lot about, you know, Youngblood in the return game, but Brooks made a big play in the return game 
of course, in the Liberty Bowl against Navy. And I don't think that was a fluke. I think he'll continue to be a factor in the return game along with young blood, of course. But I know they also love to use him in the sweep, in the jet sweep game on offense. He doesn't have incredible straight line speed, but he's very difficult to get to the ground. Uh, he has great balance. I think he's somebody that maybe over these four years will continue to talk more about, you know, his peers and Knowles and Youngblood. But I bet Philip Brooks has a lot of big contributions still in front of him. Two and one is me absolutely cheating and kind of grouping two guys together in the most lazy way fashion. And I apologize to these two individuals because they deserve to be evaluated as individuals. But I, I can't separate Katori Leviston and Kristen Duffy on this list because they're so similar and why they're here. And I have them one and two on this list for a reason. Uh, a couple of sophomores, they don't have to be K-State starters at right and left tackle next year. In fact, I'd probably guess they're not. Um, I think, you know, there's other options, whether it's incoming uh, or a dreadshirt freshman like Cooper Beebe, incoming options, moving other players. It's not just Leviston and Duffy at tackle, but in some ways they seem like the most obvious people to fill those roles. A couple of guys at this coaching staff, they didn't, you know, necessarily recruit, but they brought in and got in their first in their, in their first class at the tail end of it. No, I said that backwards. They were in the Snyder's last class. So they redshirted under him. Were redshirt freshmen last year, now sophomores coming in the next season for Chris Kleiman and company. But they're two guys that got to spend a full year last year deciding if they thought they had the length they wanted for tackle, the body type they wanted for tackle, the makeup for tackle that this staff really looked for. And they believe they did enough to play them both at tackle. So we'll see if those guys have an opportunity to become the starters at the right and left tackle spots. And that's probably going to be the most important position battles as we're looking into the spring, which, you know, is still a little ways away. But with the news of no real spring game again and more of an open spring practice on Friday, it is in my mind a little bit. And I think as we get towards that spring period, watching those tackles, specifically Christian Duffy, Katori Leviston, to see how they do. If a guy like Cooper Beebe is battling them at those spots, too, to see who comes out on top there, because that's that could have the biggest impact on any position on K-State's offense next year, at least with the changes up front along the offensive line. A relatively short edition of KSO today on this Friday. Not a lot of news outside of credit to Ryan Black again in the Sean Snyder to USC deal. Let you know what's happening again. Heading to Ames tomorrow. Excited to see Jaden Williams on Sunday and bring that to you. Next Friday, Grant Flanders has told me he wants to make his debut and will do Flando Friday by himself. You'll have Derek Young at least twice next week. So I think we're getting into the period of KSO today where you only have to hear me twice a week, which I think is probably great for you all out there. I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Watch K-State and Iowa State tomorrow. Look for the coverage on KSO. We'll bring more to you on Sunday. Have a great weekend.